Hello, I'm Dr. Chang. I'm the founder and medical director of Hanabusa IVF in San Diego, California. After many, many years, my team thought it would be a good idea to keep you abreast of some of our success stories. Miss J uh, came to us about five years ago. Uh, she came after failing four IVF cycles at another center. This was a male factor issue. Her partner's sperm was uh, not ideal. So the thought would be this would be a simple case of let's take the sperm in, inject it into the uterus, resulting in a pregnancy, what we call intrauterine insemination. Unfortunately, the other center, what they, they found with Miss J is that her ovarian reserve was very, very poor. She had an AMH of less than 0 0.1, uh, where a normal AMH is one or higher. That would be considered ideal. Uh, she had, uh, at that point, maybe two, three, four, what we call antral follicles to start, where a normal ovarian reserve, you're looking at 15, 20 in an ideal situation. They attempted four IVF cycles, only one egg retrieval uh, was accomplished, and there were no embryos from that. Ms. J came to our center. What we did was we, you know, we looked at her baseline. Her FSH didn't look so bad. She only had three or four antral follicles. At that point, we decided to apply a minimal stimulation protocol. What that resulted in is we ended up getting four eggs from that retrieval. Those four eggs ended up all fertilizing. They all became embryos that lasted to what we call blastocyst, five, six, seven days. And what we decided to do with these embryos is we tested them. We, we, ch we checked the genetics, uh, we, we call PGT, and we found out that two of these embryos were found to be normal. With two normal embryos, there's a pretty decent chance that there will be at least one baby uh, from this. A, a normal embryo doesn't give you a 100% chance of having a baby, but it does give you anywhere from a 60 to 75% chance. So Miss J decided she wanted to continue and see if she can harvest, collect more embryos. Unfortunately, at this point, her ovarian reserve went down to one follicle every month, one potential egg. and. Her FSH, which is a sign of how much her body is struggling to grow those eggs, her FSH jumped over 60. Typical definition of classic menopause is an FSH over 40, and most centers won't even perform IVF with women uh, over 20. So at that particular point, we said, let's go ahead and transfer. The first transfer ended up creating pregnancy, but she miscarried. Uh, the second transfer, though, was successful, and it and it resulted in her first baby. A couple years later, at the age of 42, Miss J came back to our office and said, you know what, I'd, I'd like to have another child. You know, But at this point, both of those normal embryos were used up. And at this point, this was a much more difficult situation. Miss J's FSH was over 40. She only had her one follicle each time. Because of that, we couldn't really do much except for natural cycles and just kind of it's like surfing. You're you're just wait. You're on the water. You're just waiting for that wave to catch up as a surfer. In this case, we're just waiting to catch that egg. We did two or three cycles. Uh, collect one or one egg each time. Remember, once again, this was a male factor issue. So we collected all these eggs and then fertilized them all at once. They did not create any good embryos. But with the fourth cycle, we were fortunate. We were able to find a cycle where. The FSH wasn't so bad, it was about 27. Uh, the follicle count was three. And because of that, we were able to eventually do a mini IVF cycle. We ended up getting three eggs, uh, two embryos, two of those, em those embryos reached blastocyst. And oddly enough, both of those embryos were normal again. Uh, we ended up transferring one of the embryos and that resulted in baby two, which just had a, a birthday this year. What we're doing is we are not trying to be very aggressive. A person can only have, um, you're, you're only gonna be able to develop the eggs that you see at the start of that cycle. You cannot stimulate more aggressively. There is a window of optimal stimulation, uh, very similar to plants, watering and fertilizing. If you don't water and fertilize them enough, they're not gonna grow your plants. If you overwater them, over fertilize, it will damage them as well. So when we approach these, uh, these cycles, these, these type of cases, we're, we're watching the FSH very closely. We are trying not to uh, overstimulate. 
we never sacrifice eggs. We never try to go for quantity. We always jump on these eggs for retrieval once they reach maturity. And we, we know that we just have to be uh, patient and uh, eventually patience will pay off.